We've been exploring aspects of soil health, looking at some of the organisms that live in the soil, the structure of that soil. Today we're going to explore the moisture below ground and how that affects the environment. Joining me is Al Sutherland, Mesonet Agricultural Coordinator. Hi Kim, how are you? I'm well, thank Good. you. Well, as a gardener, when I think of soil moisture, of course, I'm thinking of how it relates to my plant, but soil moisture really impacts the larger climate around us. Tell us how that works. Well, water, if you think about it, mm -hmm. uh, both in the air and in the soil, mm -hmm. really help buffer the temperatures. So, like last year when we had such a severe drought, we had virtually no moisture in the air mm -hmm. and we saw temperatures just go up and up and up. We set right. new records for the number of days over 100 degrees. And that same kind of principle is going on in the soil. Mm -hmm. if, if the soils have moisture in them, they're going to stay a little bit cooler. That water in that soil is going to help absorb the summer heat. Okay. If those soils dry out, then what we see is those soil temps just again, just like air temps, yeah. climb and climb and climb and get hotter and hotter. I and our plant roots just don't do well in hot soils. Right, absolutely. Now I imagine once you get where the soil's dry and the air's dry, that could just kind of cycle. <laughs> it does continue. cycle. And so mm -hmm. uh, you have your airs are dry mm -hmm. and your soil's dry and there's no moisture in the system because normally if we have moisture and especially soil moisture during the summer we have evaporation right. so that that mm -hmm. moisture is evaporating coming up into the the air and then it begins to collect and we have rain and that that right. puts moisture back into the soil so we have a, a good cycling of that moisture mm -hmm. but you're right when it gets dry there's no moisture in the system and everything, the air, the soil just keeps getting drier and drier and drier. And that's where we get into extended drought. Now, I imagine in the winter that the moisture can also have a similar effect um, on air temperature, uh, kind of the opposite, you know, in the summer we're looking at heat, but how does it affect the cold temperatures in the winter? Well, in the summer, uh, or uh, I'm sorry, the winter, um, what we have is a dry soil will allow uh, cool temperatures to go deeper mm -hmm. in there. Um, in the winter, when it freezes, the moisture in the soil will freeze and it gives off just a little bit of water and it will help hold that soil temp at 32 degrees. Okay. But if it's dry and let's say outside it's zero, mm -hmm. then that soil can get colder and colder. Okay. And then the, uh, in the air, when it's dry, we can get super cold temperatures. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in 2011, uh, we recorded one of the coldest temperatures ever uh, up in Nawada, a minus 31 degrees. Yeah, and, and we were in a period of drought at that and, point. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so uh, not only do we have the buffering that happens in the summer, uh, that is where water is absorbing the heat mm -hmm. and so we get uh, a little bit of cooling going on in our soils and our air temp. Well in the winter that water actually gives off heat so it too acts as a buffer but yeah. now it's moderating those temperatures by putting uh, heat back into the system both in the soil right. and in the air. Okay and you know with such expanses of soil of course is going to have you know big impact on temperatures around it. Mm -hmm. Whether we have water mm -hmm. uh, in the system yes over over uh, hundreds or thousands of square miles right uh, or we don't have water it does have a huge impact mm -hmm. on what's going on in terms of temperatures uh, mm -hmm. and the relative humidity. Now, obviously, as homeowners, we can't do a whole lot about that on a big scale, but what can we do in our backyard to sort of inter interact with this buffer and encourage it? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things, and I noticed uh, mm -hmm. that you have it here, is you have mulch. Mm -hmm. So that mulch is helping hold your soil moisture in. You're yeah. not losing it uh, to evaporation. The other thing that this mulch is doing is it's a actually cooling that soil. Mm -hmm. So we'll wind up with plants like this one mm -hmm. um, that are a whole lot happier. They're a lot more reproductive. You can see this one's flowering really good, so we're going to get better flowering. And then whatever water we put onto uh, this area 
is going to go to the plant. We're mm -hmm. not going to lose that through evaporation. Through evaporation. Um, last summer, when we were in that extended drought period, and I understand parts of the state are still in a drought, one of the things that I was really intrigued by was when they looked at really deep down in the soil, how dry it was. I, I expected to be dry at the surface, but it was really dry down deep. How does that happen or what are the implications of that? Well, when, you know, one of the things that we look at each year is that through the summer, the plants are taking up water. Mm -hmm. As we move into the fall, we move into a time of replenishment. So what happened in 2010 in that fall period is we did not get the rains. Right. So as we went through the winter, we didn't have the rains to really replenish that soil moisture. And so those soils began to slowly dry and dry mm -hmm. deeper and deeper down. And as we got into uh, the middle of 2012 into the summer, um, you know, we had reports back that it was dry five feet down into the soil as people were out trying to put in fence posts or, or do some kind of construction project. Right. So Al, what's the best way for us to get through these periods of drought in the garden? Well, there's a couple things we can do. Of course, one of them is watering uh, more efficiently right. because typically in a drought, especially an extended drought, um, municipalities have to start putting on water restrictions. Right. right. Um, one of the things I do at uh, our house is that I plant, you know, a fair number of containers because I can put those water loving plants in a spot mm -hmm. where I can easily water and I'm not watering everything, a right. huge area to get that water to that one plant. I'm just watering in the container. Uh, sometimes people feel like, oh man, I'm watering every day, so I'm using so much water. But over the whole season, mm -hmm. and, and by having that plant in a container, uh, you don't use as much water. Now you talked about watering every day, and I found that that was a problem last summer, is that a lot of people were watering every day. And we have a little sample we cut out, but when you do that, you're, you're just getting your water in this upper surface, giving it a little bit all the time, and I found that you know, that, that just encourages shallow root growth and that's where the soil was so hot. Uh, so we want to water a little deeper, try to pe penetrate uh, the soil moisture. Yeah, and where you really see people water shallow is, you know, we have a turf grass here, but that's, they have those automatic sprinkler systems and mm -hmm. they set them up to run 15 minutes every day. And what they're going to do is, like you said, is water very shallow. Mm -hmm. And so the roots are just going to stay up here. If we get into a drought and they can't water, now there's no roots down below mm -hmm. to pick up any of that deeper moisture. And, and this profile in here shows how we're drying out up above, but as we go deeper, mm -hmm. uh, we have water down deep. And so we really want to water well mm -hmm. when we water. And we want to water, try to water to the depth of those roots. And so um, a lot of times with our vegetables, um, we're actually like tomatoes and things, we want to water uh, 18 inches or so down into the ground. We're not mm -hmm. trying to water real shallow. Yeah. Uh, grasses, we try to water those about six inches. Um, our normal flowers would be about 12 inches. Uh, trees, we're gonna have to start thinking in terms of feet, maybe yeah. two or three feet. Mm -hmm. um, but we wouldn't do that, but maybe once a month. Right. Or mm -hmm. two or three times through a whole summer. So we're not gonna be out there every week watering two or three to feet deep. Yeah. Now what tools do you have uh, at Mesonet that might help a homeowner uh, judge the what's going on in the landscape? Well, one of the things that we have are course of the rainfall maps mm -hmm. and those rainfall maps are really nice because we have the mesonet data for each site the actual rain gauge collection and then uh, below that data that number we have colors and those colors are radar estimates of rainfall and we have those for hours we have those for days up to 30 days so we have a really good feel for not only what fell at the nearest mesonet station, but also what fell in between that. 
And wow. that could be more than what the Mesonet station recorded, or it could be less. Helps you get information on a more localized uh, it, area. It does. Mm -hmm. And then the next level of products would be the actual soil moisture sensors. And we have those at two inches, we have them at uh, 10 inches, and then we have them at 24 inches. So the two inch is really handy for when we're getting ready to plant that uh, uh, vegetable garden. Uh, put those seeds out, how much moisture do we have to get those uh, off and started. And then uh, from the deeper levels, the 10 inch really is where we're drawing a lot of moisture for our typical flowers and shrubs and right. plants. Mm -hmm. And then the 24 inch gives us an idea of that deeper soil moisture. Yeah. So we can see if it's dry, uh, mm -hmm. if we need to worry about watering for our trees. Some of our trees. Well, I'm really hoping that we get some rain to give our friends across the state a little relief. And I really appreciate you sharing this information with us here today. Well, thanks for having me on.